Welcome back to the Water Jet Knives YouTube channel. I'm Elliot Adair, and I'm going to take you through my step-by-step -step process how to make our new Finch knife kit. In this video, I'm going to take you through grinding the initial bevel of the knife, heat treating with my even heat treating oven, tempering it with a toaster oven, then I'm going to do my final grind going up to a very high grit. I'm going to glue on my handle scales and then I'm going to sand down the scales, polish everything up and put an edge on the blade. So obviously we're starting with a knife blank that has been cut on our water jet. Normally I would heat treat after doing the initial grind of the bevel so that I wouldn't mess up the properties of the knife, but I am going to do it backwards for this video. If you are watching this because you subscribed to our subscription box, I already sent you a heat treated knife. So this step has already been done for you. I'm gonna pop it in my um, even heat treating oven at 1525 degrees for 10 minutes. After 10 minutes is up, I'm gonna come grab it out and I immediately need to quench it in oil. I'm using a special knife maker's oil. Um, you don't have to have that necessarily. You can use canola oil. As long as you can put the knife in, you wanna put it in quickly and then take it in and out um, fast. If it starts to make flames or anything, you just keep pumping it. You wanna keep going until the knife is done smoking basically and it's cooled down. It's still gonna be hot to touch, so careful. The next step after the heat treat, um, if you can do it immediately after, it's great. I'm going to temper it. That's going to take it from heat treating, which made the steel get really hard. Now this is going to draw it back a little bit and strengthen it. It's going to make it less brittle and add strength to it. So if you are watching this because you subscribe to our subscription box, I did not temper it. I only heat treated it. So you do need to do this part of the process. I'm gonna put it in my little toaster oven or you can use any regular oven at home. I'm gonna put it in for um, two cycles of two hours each and it's going to be at 350 degrees. When it's done with the second two hour cycle, I can take that out and I'm ready to get going on the grinder. Before I do any grinding, I'm going to mark my plunge line or at least the goal that I have for my plunge line with these set of calipers. I'm gonna set it at four tenths of an inch and mainly that's just to get, I mean, yeah, a goal set in place for where I want it to end up. It probably won't end exactly right there. And it also helps me keep it symmetrical on the other side. So I'm gonna mark both sides, just give it a little scratch in and I'll be able to see it throughout the process of grinding. I also need to mark my center. So I'm gonna take the thickness of the blank and I'm going to cut that in half. And then I'm going to mark the center line so that I have that goal to reach for as well. I do it in this direction and then I flipped it and I did it in the other direction as well. using an Ameribray 2x2, 2x72 inch grinder. And I'm gonna start off with this 36 grit belt. I line it up with my hand and make sure it's running smoothly before I turn it up and get it to about a half speed. If you don't have a fancy grinder like this, it's fine. Um, I do a lot of my knife grinding on a 1x36 as well. So you can work your way up to this if you really get into knife making. Now we're ready to do our first grinds. So I'm gonna go in. I start off with my um, right hand direction 
and that's because I'm right-handed, it's my stronger hand, so pay attention when you are switching directions to which your strong hand is and your weak hand, you um, are gonna notice a big difference of how well you perform and you need to overcorrect on your weak hand. So I'm gonna go in with not too crazy of an angle, like 45 degrees, and I just want to start creating what's called a flat that I'm going to um, continually push back towards my plunge line. I'm gonna be constantly playing or doing a dance between heading towards that center line on the blade cutting edge and heading towards the plunge line. And the whole time I'm doing that, I don't want to create multiple flats. You'll figure that out while you're in the knife making process. So you don't want to basically start a new angle while you are going up. What you're going to do is just slightly alter your angle as you go. If you want to head more towards the center of the knife, you're gonna to wanna to put more pressure towards the blade tip. If you wanna head more towards the plunge line, you're gonna add more pressure towards that direction. I'm also not gonna go completely up to my plunge line and to my center lines with this grit of belt. I wanna save some of the grinding to do with some of my higher grit belts so that I can get away some of these deeper scratches from that 36 grit and above. getting close I am right up there by that plunge line I marked I'm probably about far enough where I need to go with my 36 grit belt so I need to switch now to my left hand my left hand it's gonna be a little bit tougher for me but I'm just gonna take this side slower and I'm going to give it more attention you'll notice that I'm dipping the blade into something while I'm doing this that's a little tin of water so it keeps it cool Almost every swipe at this point, I'm dipping it in because the blade heats up really fast and it can not only burn you, but also if you have your blade heat treated before you started, it'll um, mess with the heat treat, the properties of it. I'm getting close to the thickness I want down there at the blade edge, but I still have a little bit of a ways to go. So I'm gonna keep progressing towards that direction because I'm almost to where I need to be on my plunge line. just about where I want to be. So I'm going to go ahead and um, swap out my sanding belt. The next belt I use is a 60 grit. It's important to progress up through your grits so that you don't have deeper scratches that can't come out. So it's gonna be harder for say, a 200 grit belt to get out the 36 grit um, scratches. So I'm gonna progress up through, start off with this 60 grit, and I'm not gonna take off very much at all. I'm pretty much just trying to get those scratches removed. And that's why I've left a little bit of room for my plunge lines and my center line so that I don't get it too thin before I put the final edge on it. Thank you. 
Okay, got everything done I wanted to with that 60 grit. I'm gonna step up to the next level now, which is a 120 grit. I'm gonna do the same thing. Go through, get out those scratches. I'm slowly progressing still to that desired plunge line. I might be a little bit past it at this point, but that's okay. The goal in the end is just to have it symmetrical. Okay, swapping out uh, belts again. This time it's gonna be a 220 grit. Gonna go back through, do the same stuff. Just trying to stay careful of not getting too far towards my center and not too high up on my plunge lines. Now that I'm at the 220 grit belt, I'm going to clean up my spine and the edges of my blank a little bit. This is a good opportunity to take care of these because it's already pretty smooth, so I don't need to go through all the grits, like the 36, etc. I'm just gonna start up here at the 220. I'm gonna hit every edge and I'm going to also round off some of the corners so that it's not too sharp. And this will be the majority of what I have on the, my final finish. I'm going to also progress this up through the higher grits as well. But um, this will make sure you have a much smoother, better looking edge. I try not to miss anything, but there's gonna be certain parts that you can't reach, like right up by the choil and certain little um, nooks and crannies of the knife that you can't get into with your big grinder so you'll have to hand sand those or use a um, smaller tool like a Dremel and if you have a powerful magnet I know a lot of knife makers have those I couldn't find mine while I was making this video but those are great for doing these edge sandings because it's hard to hold all that that tiny little knife up against it and not have it slip out of your hand. So if you have a powerful magnet, it's perfect. You're not gonna nick your fingers on the sanding belts either. I'm 
I'm gonna do the same thing now with the flat part of the blank. I'm probably gonna keep this finish in the end, so I want it to look good and smooth. So I'm gonna start this at the 220 as well. It would be a lot easier if I had one of those magnets, but I'm just gonna hold on tight and I'm gonna sand it in both directions so I don't get um, sand lines in any direction. So I'm gonna do it bottom to top and then top to bottom switching directions. You'll notice I'm doing this part on the flat flatten, and that's really important because obviously this is a really flat part of the knife. I don't necessarily need to get the get under where my handle skulls are going to be perfectly. So the biggest part I'm worrying worrying about is what's going to be exposed in the end, the flat part that's just above the plunge line that's going to be part of the finished product of the knife. I'm gonna swap out this um, 220 belt for my 400, and then I'm gonna go back through the whole all the steps, including the um, spine, the edges, and the flat parts of the blank. This is the highest grit I'm going to go to, so I want to have this be my final shape of my bevel, which means I need to get my center line all the way to where it's ready to be, um, have its final edge, and it's my final, um, plunge line where that's going to end up. So I'm gonna start doing the handle scales next. I have my knife done for the most part, so I'm gonna trace that out where I want it. If you ordered a kit from us, um, there should be plenty of wood, so I'm gonna do it in this direction, but you can actually even do it on the other side of these little wood scales. So 
it's going to be a lot of extra wood. But I'm going to have this all marked up and I'm actually going to do the handle scales separately from the knife. So I'm not going to glue them on and then sand them down. I'm going to sand them to where I want them and then I'm going to apply them later. I'm going to put a little dot of glue on these so that I can um, get them together. And if I sand them at the same time while they're glued together, they'll be perfectly symmetrical rather than trying to do them separately. You can start off again with a high grit belt just to get away a lot of this excess wood because there is a lot. I'm going to have to just buzz through that and you can do this with the saw too, if, especially if you have a harder wood or a different material that is a lot more dense. But this is a softer wood, this 36 grit sandpaper is going to go right through it. And I will just get them all marked up to where I want them to be. They're also a lot thicker than I need, so I'm going to have to grind them down to an appropriate width. Thickness. check in with my knife make sure everything's lining up well um, I want them to go just inside the um, knife everywhere so I'm going to keep going a little bit further this gives me a really good idea of where I'm at I'll keep going with the 36 and I'm going to swap this out for a higher grip belt once I get my basic shape. Okay, I swapped out for a higher grip belt and I'm going to go over all those edges. Make sure I perfect the shape while I'm at it. I don't want it to get lopsided in any one direction. So I'm gonna be careful about that. And then I'm gonna add a bevel to um, the edges. So it'll be better to hold rather than like a sharp um, pointy thing in your hand. Okay, without damaging these, I'm going to try to pry them apart with this little X-Acto razor knife. Don't want to snap the wood either. After I got them off, I can see that they're still a lot thicker than I want. So since I've already added the bevel, I'm going to just grind down the inside so that um, I can get the perfect thickness that I want when I'm holding it in my hand. I'm going to sand in both directions so that I can be symmetrical. You always want to sand up and down and down and up if possible. And 
these are just about where I want them to be. I don't want them sticking off the edge. I want the metal to slightly stick off on this design that I'm doing. You can do it obviously exactly how you want. I'm gonna go ahead and get these glued on. I'm using a two-part epoxy and mixing the A and B together. I'm gonna mix it up for a good minute, make sure it's really well stirred together, and then I'm gonna use as little glue as possible so that it can not spread out too much over the knife. I got a little bit messy here, so if you can avoid that, obviously that would be a lot better for you in the end. I'm gonna have to hand sand off a lot of this epoxy that um, is coming out over the edges or got on the outside of my handle scales. get that together there and then I'm going to um, just clean it up as well as I can before I clamp it. I want to align the handle scales after I've cleaned it up make sure they're perfectly exactly where I want before I put the clamps on. See I've got a tiny bit of space um, of metal on every side of the wood for this design that I went for. clamps on that's all I can fit and these ones aren't super strong my wood's pretty um, dense so it's not going to dent these probably I'm just gonna leave them there overnight if you want to add some sort of protection um, like tape or a cloth or something that's never a bad idea so that you don't mess up your handle scales but you have to remember that your epoxy can get uh, stuck to whatever it is you use after I put these um, clamps on it did um, kind of screw up the location of my handle scales one last time so I'm gonna make sure those are all perfect in every direction and then I'm just gonna set it out to dry it's looking good the next day. Everything's holding together well. This design doesn't have pins, so you are gonna wanna make sure you do an extra good job with the epoxy. So do an inspection, make sure there's no gaps or anything. And then I'm gonna get over and just put the uh, final edge on my knife. The angle here is obviously pretty steep. You want it to be, you know, razor sharp. So you're gonna not be coming in at 45 degrees anymore. It's gonna be more like a 12 degree angle that you come in. And it's just like when you're grinding that initial bevel, I like to, uh, you know, you gotta find that flat as you go and you're trying to meet the two together. The edges of each side need to come together and create that fine razor tip. I like to use the slack part of the um, sanding belt here. It gives you a little bit more flexibility and helps you get that perfect um, edge that you're looking for. This is such a precise um, part of the knife that you don't want something to um, have any influence on it like the platen. You can keep filling with your fingers as you go and See how sharp it's getting. Once you feel that like razor edge that's kind of um, sticking to your skin as you brush by it, then you know you're pretty close. I got it to where I wanted it. So now I'm going to um, use this leather glove to strop it. I, this isn't the best um, method, but it's all the leather I had with me at my house. trying to get off that very fine razor sharp burr at the end so that it's going to give you just that super sharp edge. 
Okay, let's test this out. See how sharp it is, if it can cut a paper. It's right about there, good sharp finish on it. Thank you guys for following along and watching. If you have more questions about the knife, leave them below in the comments. We appreciate you guys checking us out. And if you want to get this kit, it's available at our store, waterjetknives.com.